Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check out Balloon Pop from Tasty Minstrel Games. This will take about 10 minutes to play. It's for ages about 6 plus, and it's for one or more players. Definitely an interesting player count there. But in Balloon Pop, you are going to be rolling dice, trying to get your balloon as full as possible without popping those balloons. It's a little bit of a push your luck dice rolling game. Very simple family weight, but is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think about it. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Balloon Pop. So first and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule booklet. It's a uh, one thin little page, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. Very well done, should have you up and running very smoothly and you'll probably never really need it again unless you're consulting the solo play to see how many stars you got. So big thumbs up on the rule booklet. So in Balloon Pop, what you're going to be doing is you are going to be rolling these dice right here and you're going to be looking at the symbols on the die and you are we're going to be trying to get the most points over three rounds but you're going to play more rounds than that how it works is you're only going to score points when someone breaks one of their balloons you break a balloon by circling one of these top numbers up here as you slowly get more of the same symbol or more of the same color you're going to be circling the ones on the bottom until you get all the way to the top but actually just showing you how the game is played is actually the easiest way to do this so let's go ahead and do that so first we got our dice right here. You're going to have five dice. When you first start, you're always going to roll three dice. They are going to be three sides that are red, two sides that are blue, and one side that is yellow. And all the dice are the exact same. Um, the hardest symbols to come by is going to be the diamond right here. There's only one diamond and there's only one yellow, which is why they're on the left and the right side. Those are the hardest to come by. So on your turn, what you do is you're going to roll the three dice and then you're going to decide, are you happy with this roll or would you like to continue to roll? If you decide that you would like to continue to roll, you have to re-roll one of these three die and then roll a fourth dice. However, this is a really good roll right here. I would definitely keep this. So... I keep this, my turn is over, but first I must mark on here that I have two yellows, so I just circled two of the bottom yellows, one on the bottom red, one diamond, which is really good, and then two stars, because I have two stars on the two yellows. And that would be my turn right there. Pretty simple. So let's move on to the next guy. Let's see what he would do. He would roll this. He'd say, you know what? I don't want all that red, so I'm going to roll, but since he's re-rolling, he has to roll four. So he rolls four, he gets two reds, a blue, and a yellow. He's like, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Even though he might not be because he's got all these stars. But So he might say, you know what, I'm just going to roll these two right here. And whatever he gets, he is now going to have to keep with. So he's got, uh, this actually is a pretty good roll. Three stars, a crescent, a diamond, two yellows, a blue, and two reds. Anywho, let's get back to our main character, our protagonist here. So it's now his turn once again. He's going to roll the dice. And he's got two stars and a crescent. He might say, yeah, I'm going to re-roll one of these. And he might do that. And he might stop now. So he's got three stars. So he would circle one, two, three. He's got one crescent. He's got two reds. Bloop, bloop. One yellow, which he's, he's going to be scoring some good points on the yellow right there. And then one blue. Now what eventually is going to happen is one player is going to pop. So let's just say this next turn uh, I were to get, say, four stars. One, two, three, four stars somehow. Maybe I got uh, two reds, one blue, and one yellow. So I have popped. So what this means is we're going to finish out this round. So if I went first, the second player would get one more turn. And then this is the first break. So I would tally up how many points I would get right now. So I'd get 11 plus 3, so 14, 18, 22, uh, 24, and 25. So on the first break tally, I would have 25 points. Likewise, the other player is going to do the same thing. It doesn't matter how many times you pop on a turn, or it doesn't matter if I pop and my opponent pops and someone else pops. It only matters that at least one person popped. So uh, everyone would score now. And then we would rinse, wash, repeat. We would continue to go. However, now for me, stars aren't going to do anything for me since I've already popped on stars. So getting stars isn't such a bad thing. So I might get this one right here. And let's just pretend once again and say I get uh, two diamonds, one crescent, and then let's just say I got five reds somehow. I got incredibly unlucky. 
I got five reds. This would trigger our second break, which means once again, everyone would have an equal number of turns, and then we would tally up our points for this. So now we would have 11, 14, 20, 24, because this star stays right there, 27, and 33. So I would do that once again. Uh, and then we would continue to play until someone broke again, at which point, even if it wasn't me, we would do our final scoring. We would tally that up. So let's just say we got 41 for that. We would total up all of our points, and whoever has the highest of these three combined on their final score would be the winner of Balloon Pop. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Balloon Pop from Tasty Minstrel Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. It is a very simple, light game, which is going to be a turn-off to some people. There's not much meat on the bones here at all. It's just a little simple push-your-luck game. And I feel like if you only play it once or twice, you might be like, oh, there's not much strategy here at all. Even though I would argue the more you play, the more you're like, oh, there is a little bit of strategy here. Not too much, but a little bit, which might be a turn off to some people. Also, it comes with pads, and you are going to run out of pads. We played this, I think, maybe probably five, six, seven times now, and I'd say we probably only have about maybe 35 to 40 more pads left. So this is the kind of game where you will run out of pads, which is good because you're probably going to play the game that many times or with a lot of players, but bad because I don't know where you're going to get more of these. I'd assume on the website. Another con that I have with this game is that uh, it says one or more players. I think the board game geek says one to ten players. I don't think I would recommend the game past maybe five players. You know, maybe six or seven, but honestly, only if you're playing with non-gamers, I think. If it's the kind of thing where you're just kind of sitting around, maybe talking, having a drink or something, then I think you might play with the higher player counts. But realistically, I think you're going to cap this off at about five or six most of the time. But the fact that you can play with more is a nice feature. Any other cons I have with the game? The yellow dice are a little bit hard to see the stars on them, but that's more of a nitpick than anything at all. I really don't have too many cons with this game. There's not too much game in this box, so there's not too many holes to poke in the game. But moving on to the pros, there's also not too many holes to poke because I really enjoy Balloon Pop, and this is one that is going to go on my shelf. This is one that one of these days I'm going to talk to Taste Mitchell Game and be like, hey, can I get some more of these pads? Because my family really likes this. They really enjoyed this. Is this something I'm going to play on a game night? No. Maybe, maybe, maybe as a very super quick light filler. Like jokingly, if someone's like, oh, I'm just going to stop at McDonald's. I'll be there in like 10 minutes. You might bust this out and play it. But for the most part, I feel like this is purely going to fall in the family game category, gateway game category, children's game category. Yeah, children's game category. I played this with my son, Solo, where we played together and made the decisions. We shot a video of that. He really enjoyed this game and he wants to play it more. So I eventually could see him playing a lot of this when he gets to be six, seven years old. So I would put it firmly in that category. And for what it does, it does it pretty well. It's simple. It's light. Easy to learn, easy to teach. It uh, it has a very well done rule booklet. The dice are nice. It comes with a pencil, which is an added nice touch. I love the fact it comes with a pencil. Score pad is easy to use. Component wise, very very nice. There's not really anything I dislike about this game too much. Also, the box is very super small, which is great. They could have made this into a bigger box, and I'm glad they didn't, uh, because yeah, it, it doesn't deserve it doesn't deserve it shouldn't be in a bigger box because it's a very small game so i'm happy about that anything else i like about the game no it's, it's a dirt simple light family slash children weight game that i can recommend if you were in the market for this game oh and yeah it's cheap i think it's 14.95 brand spanking new so that is a pretty dang cheap game so that is balloon pop from tasty menstrual game one me and my family definitely did enjoy and if you're in the market for something like this be sure to check this one out if you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below and in the comments below. Let me know, how do you blow up balloons? Do you blow them up super big so they're about to pop, or do you just play it safe? For me personally, it really depends on how many balloons I'm blowing up. If I want to blow it up like two or three, then you better bet. Like, I blow it all the way up, and then I let all the air out so it just kind of naturally stretches, and then I blow it up again so it gets even huger, so it's like just a gigantic balloon ready to pop. But I have to blow it up a lot of balloons? No way. I'm only going to blow it up just a little bit for each one. But let me know in the comments below. How do you blow? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.